So a first step in breaking down a complex situation is to try and understand the constituent parts of it and how they interrelate with each other to produce the final outcome we're interested in. And one of the key tools we would use in that situation would be cognitive mapping. Essentially it's a way of telling a story in pieces and joining each of those pieces back together again to get a, a view of the whole story in one place. Particularly understanding all of the interconnected parts of that story and how they play through to the final outcome. To show how that works in a, a simple way, we've thought about a, a natural disaster. It's very complex, like a business. Um, and if we looked at a case study for an oil spill, for example, the final outcome is the spill of oil going through a natural disaster scenario. What could lead to that? What sort of events would experts point to as being indicators of that beginning to happen? And as they tell those stories, you can explore further how nuances and uh, particular dynamics might play out. And capturing all of those in cognitive mapping, we can then play back to them what that looks like overall. And begin to pick out as a group things which, as I say, none of them would have seen individually, but as a group they begin to collaborate and tell that story in a more powerful way. As a first step, we'd think about the immediate things which could lead to an oil spill. Failures of particular controls, certain processes which didn't pan out how we thought they might do, certain control dynamics which could fail, and essentially then looking at each of those things and asking the next question, which is how could those things have happened? So we're building up a story backwards from the point of crisis to try and understand the events which led to those, the underlying patterns which caused those events to take place, and ultimately getting a sense of the system structure which is creating that environmental impact. Now as we get a, a richer picture of all of those events flowing through, we can begin to ask questions about where the key dynamics might be and looking for parts of the story which seem particularly connected to what's going on. Now those highly connected pieces are the things we're after. Those are the things which will make the biggest difference to the story. And if we could control those or avoid them, they're the things which would lead to a well-controlled outcome. Now the next question is which things would lead to those critical things taking place. And a cognitive map actually gives us the analytical platform to work out where those things are coming from. Now once we've understood those, we can begin to deploy um, different approaches or techniques which can help us to prevent them from happening or at least try and limit their ability to produce that final outcome. So by walking backwards from the final crisis and understanding through the expert input where those dynamics are coming from, we've actually got a stronger chance of anticipating and avoiding that final consequence. So from the oil example we've just gone through, you can see that cognitive mapping is a very powerful tool plays very naturally to the way people think and makes explicit the things which they're struggling to communicate. In a corporate environment working with experts in the business, it naturally allows them to express themselves and tell us the things which they know individually and collaborate with colleagues to put that together into an overall picture of their combined understanding.